No, but the really exciting thing about being here, thanks so much for having me, is that when I ran Click Z in the Click Z network, it was the sister publication of Search Engine Watch. And at the time, Danny and Chris and Elizabeth and all those guys were my colleagues and we worked together. So it's really kind of a great homecoming coming back here to Seattle and coming back to search conferences where I spent so many years and, and so much of my life and, of course, seeing my former professional family. Um, but I changed direction a little bit and I'm still covering digital marketing and particularly looking at advertising. And I'm here to share with you some research I published uh, very late in 2013, so not that long ago, on native advertising. Does anybody here know what native advertising is? Hi. Hey. Oh, you want to turn me on? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Is that better? Can you? Ooh, I'm, I'm resonating now. Um, how many of you guys know what native advertising is? One hand sort of tentatively went up. And that's why I undertook this research. Um, starting around mid-2013, so just about a year ago, everybody started talking about native advertising, but nobody knew what it was or what it wanted to be. It tended to mostly mean what somebody trying to sell you a product or a service wanted it to mean. So I thought, if the industry is going to really be talking about this topic, we have to align around a definition. And I realized that as an analyst, I don't get to define what it is, but I could conduct some research and put a stake in the ground and say, here's a working definition. Let's go from there. So um, we're going to start with my definition of native advertising, which we arrived at through research. Talk about why native advertising? Why would you want to do whatever it is that this thing is in the first place? And then finally, um, some recommendations and best practices for those of you who think you might want to dive into this topic. So let's get into the definition of native advertising. Everybody's talking about it. What is it? And I should add that at around the time I was conducting the research, the IAB, the Interactive Advertising Bureau, also put together a task force to define native advertising. And they subsequently came out with a de definition. And I was on the committee that came out with that definition. I was on the committee, it must be said, with approximately 250 or 300 other people. So that definition was arrived at very, very differently. The definition that we arrived at through a great deal of research is that native advertising is a form of converged media, I'm going to get back to that term, that combines paid and owned media into a form of commercial messaging that is integrated into and often unique to a specific delivery platform. So what's converged media? That's something else that as an analyst I have covered fairly deeply. Converged media is when paid, owned, and earned media. Paid is advertising, owned is content, earned is either social media or PR, come together to form new types of advertising and marketing. So what's a promoted post on Facebook? What's a promoted tweet on Twitter? You're paying for it, so it's kind of advertising but it's also kind of content and it's also kind of social. That's why we say that things, social platforms in particular that have advertising and, and other forms of monetization are converged media. Because if you asked of a Facebook or a Twitter, is it paid, owned, or earned media, the answer would be yes. We define content marketing as owned media because by definition you don't pay to place content. It lives on platforms that you own or, for the most part, control. So by definition, there's no media buy, which is advertising. Advertising is when you rent time or space, you know, very, very, very bluntly put, you know, a rectangle or a square or some broadcast hours. But combine content and combine media buy, and you've got native advertising. So that's the first part of this definition. The second part gets a little stickier, fully integrated into and unique to a specific delivery platform. 
Native advertising is a term that was coined, maybe a little inadvertently, I didn't think he, don't think he knew at the time it was going to become common parlance, by the New York VC Fred Wilson. Um, I'm sure some of you are familiar with him. He is an investor in Twitter, he's an investor in Foursquare, social media platforms. So when he started talking about native advertising, he was really referring to these executions on, on social media platforms. But native advertising is something that has been very broadly adopted by traditional publishers, by Time Inc. and Condé Nast and the New York Times and virtually every single publisher that's a member of the OPA, the Online Publishers Association. And in that sense, native advertising looks a lot like what we used to call in traditional media, advertorial or branded content. Except that's a really weird term to use when you're talking about Facebook or Twitter or Foursquare, etc. So that's why we said fully integrated and unique to a specific delivery platform. I think it's fairly evident why something created for and integrated and embedded into the New York Times would look weird on BuzzFeed and vice versa. So here's an example of a native advertising execution on Mashable. This is that traditional, in, in air quotes, digital publisher execution. It's advertorial, it's kind of a, a, it's by Todd Wasserman, who is on Mashable staff, but it is presented by Capital One. There's a lot of disclosure around the fact that Mashable's editors did not commission this particular piece of content, but rather a brand did. This is native advertising on Facebook. It's a suggested poster, a promoted poster, a sponsored post. Again, lots of disclosure around the fact that somebody is paying for you to see this stuff on your Facebook news feed. It's not just there because your friend posted it. So now that we've arrived at a definition of what native advertising is, why would you want to do it? Um, plenty of reasons, actually. One is banner blindness. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the stats. My favorite is from Pew that 80% of consumers completely ignore display advertising and almost never click on it. Um, by the same token, they're skipping pre-roll advertising in video, they're installing plugins so that these things don't show up in the first place. Email engagement is eroding, email open rates are eroding, and consumer attention is all over the place. I can tell just looking at the audience, but some of you are writing and some of you are taking pictures and some of you are looking at pads and some of you are looking at tablets. How is an advertiser supposed to get through all of that fragmentation? Um, automation is very much to blame. Programmatic, you know, this kind of set it and forget it, auto-optimized, Robots control your advertising. Uh, you're being retargeted for those shoes that you already bought three months ago. Just leave me alone advertising. Native is supposed to be a solution for that kind of thing. It's highly customized. It's highly crafted. No automation practically at all. And then finally, the downward price pressure on classic display advertising. Even if you disregard everything I'm saying, about you know, declining open rates, declining effectiveness. If display was working so well, its price wouldn't be sinking every single year. Obviously, there are properties that are an exception to this rule. Overall, the price for native is sinking, uh, which indicates a fall in effectiveness and also indicates that publishers need to do something to recapture that consumer attention. Facebook is saying that their page posts are generating 40 times more clicks than traditional on-site ads at almost half the cost of display advertisements. Uh, pretty impressive. Generally, things that are new always do have higher engagement. Remember when you used to open all your spam because it was exciting just getting email, or maybe I just do because I'm that old? Um, you know, that, that kind of stuff does sort of ebb down and decline. Nevertheless, this is still a pretty exciting number. And there are opportunities for the entire advertising and media ecosystem. Publishers can benefit from native advertising because many of them have their own agencies in-house. They can charge premium rates. 
social platforms. Again, it's a more integrated, more organic, more natural form of advertising. Brands can get deeper, more immersive, richer messages out there because it is a pull type of content marketing rather than interruptive advertising. Agencies have a new source of revenue, new types of executions that they can work on for their clients. And finally, there are technology platforms that are growing up around this ecosystem that are attempting to bring a degree of automation, a degree of optimization to um, native advertising. So here are some of the pros and cons um, for, or I'll start with the pros and I'll move on to the cons for different members of, of the media and advertising ecosystem. And I don't know if this is legible to any of you out there at all, but it's on my SlideShare page if you really want to download it and dig into it. So um, users opt into it. It's content. It's a poll strategy. Native executions are content marketing. Consumers like native advertising. I mean, if you think of, a, of publications like Buzz, Buzz, I was going to say Buzzworthy, Buzzfeed, Upworthy, they're very much based on native advertising executions. You know, the 10 cutest pet things are, are brought to you by Purina, et cetera. It combats downward price pressure um, for publishers because these highly handcrafted, optimized executions require a lot of hard work. They're not set it and forget it. You can charge a premium over banners. It's a new revenue stream. Uh, publishers are not going to fight with that. It is. Um, it increases the life, the reach, and the efficacy of owned media. Once you create content for your blog, for an event, for anything that you might do, you want to recycle that content. You don't want to just use it and forget it. You can pull a headline here and a blurb there, some video assets, some, some visual assets, recombine them into a native ad execution, just as you can turn a blog post into a tweet. You can just keep recombining and getting new life out of this content. It is a better way to integrate paid owner media, obviously higher consumer engagement. Uh, very strong potential for mobile platforms. Obviously mobile, whether it's tablets, whether it's smartphones, have less real estate on them for banners, but when it's opt-in compelling content, you've got a chance of capturing consumer attention. The best native advertising can reinforce or even improve the user experience on a publisher's site or on a social media site. And finally, and this is where search starts coming into the, to the equation, it amplifies beyond just the media property because almost every native execution has a social component to it. Retweet this, share it with your friends. Uh, we all know that Matt Cutts came out early and strongly against native advertising as anything that should be allowed to boost SEO for either a publisher or the brand involved in the execution. But that social component of native isn't immune if a native execution catches on. And of course, we've seen properties like BuzzFeed pretty much base their livelihood on this and really get amplified. It's not all peaches and cream and roses. There are cons to native advertising. It doesn't scale well because it is incredibly labor intensive. It is the opposite of programmatic advertising. It's still evolving. We're still trying to figure it out. So best practices are la lacking. The roles are wildly ill-defined. Does content marketing do this? Well, we don't have a content marketing department. Well, maybe our social media department should do it. Yeah, but we've got an advertising agency and advertising agencies handle ads. Very, very confusing for a lot of brands. Let's just leave it alone. Uh, metrics and KPIs aren't developed. A lot of publisher sites are using publisher metrics to measure the efficacy of native ad executions, which is kind of ridiculous. Time spent on page might be nice, but it is not exactly telling you how many more widgets you sold or whether or not it boosted purchase intent. That's the fault of the brands, as well as some of the people selling native advertising, for not developing and applying metrics that are more meaningful to what the campaigns are meant to achieve. 
Uh, no, oh, you've got to have a strong content ability, and that requires content strategy. We just fielded a survey and found that 70% of organizations don't have a formal documented content strategy. It makes it hard right out of the gate. Um, Google says, nope, we're not letting native advertising execution count. Uh, that's, that's pretty difficult, especially for the marketers who are really using content marketing to, to boost SEO and to boost organic search visibility. Uh, native now doesn't count. Content obviously lacking strategy lacks budget, and so that makes it difficult to create content for native advertising. People across the native ecosystem need to be trained in what this is and how to do it. Uh, I was talking to publishers and some really, really big New York major publishers who were saying, we're having trouble selling this stuff because our sales staff goes out and they've been selling banners for years and they don't really want to know what this is or understand it. So uh, how do we sell it to our clients? At the same time, we're seeing publishers set up workshops. Um, I know BuzzFeed did this, and Upworthy has done it, and a couple of other publishers. Gawker has a studio that's done it. They train agencies and train brands in what native is, and how creatives can create native executions. It's really kind of a sales tactic, not a trainings tactic. Uh, consumers might view native advertising as misleading, and this has certainly gotten the FTC's attention. The FTC had a workshop on native advertising in uh, December of this year, and when the FTC does this, we've seen them do it around paid search advertising, we've seen them do it around email, we've seen them do it around word of mouth marketing. It's actually kind of an interesting validation, right? Um, all of these different marketing channels achieved legitimacy when the FTC said, if you guys don't get your house in order, we're going to do it for you, which of course always makes the industry sit up and pay attention, and develop standards and best practices around this stuff. So there's got to be transparency and disclosure. And finally, there's that question of the voice and the context, environment, authenticity, does this really sound like it belongs here? Um, I think all of you have probably seen those weird advertorials that are like, you know, come to Korea, and it's supposed to look like it's part of the New York Times, but it really doesn't, and it just looks weird and awkward and grafted on. Uh, native is supposed to look native, not like, you know, a tumor that just landed on, on whatever property it's, it's existing on. So with that, we have some recommendations for best practices around native advertising. Oh, and before I go into these, I just want to say that all the research we publish at Altimeter is available on our site through Creative Commons. So if you want to go deeper, just download the report and help yourself free of charge. Um, so these are the eight um, best practices we've developed for getting started in native advertising. The first, and I hate that I even say this, especially to a search audience, because you guys know this so well because we've been through it with the FTC a million times. Disclose, disclose, disclose. If it's an ad, say it's an ad. Say that it's commercial, that somebody paid for it. Say who paid for it. Have a link on the page that says, if you want to know more about what this is, what a sponsored post is, click here and we'll tell you. That's a channel for inquiry saves you a whole lot of hot water, and it saves you um, a lot of embarrassment, like when, I'm sure a lot of you know, last year, about a year and a half ago, when The Atlantic did a native execution for the Church of Scientology, which, just getting away from the fact that those are very strange bedfellows, didn't disclose, didn't have any disclosure, and really took a lot of heat in the media for it. You've got to have content strategy. If native is a marriage of owned media, which is content, and paid media, which is advertising, you need to understand the content piece of this. And content in advertising is the same as creative, but for native advertising, it's a different, more editorial type of creative. And it also needs to be similar in voice, tone, look, feel, etc., to the channel that it appears on. 
And Native ad creative has to be run through all those advertising checks and balances, but also editorial checks and balances. You need a lot of people to collaborate on this stuff. You need media people working with content people. That's a bit of an of a unfamiliar, chimney relationship. You need to apply metrics here that work for different types of executions. So you need to establish common goals. You need to get teams aligned around those common goals and incentivize and encourage this kind of collaboration. And it can get com complicated when you have people inside the brand doing it, maybe inside your ad agency, and then the third end of that, or the third leg of that stool might be a media property as well. Lots of moving parts. Earned component, um, we've got paid and owned media comprising native advertising. Social media, earned media is a huge part of this and also where search comes in, where you get the organic oomph. So you want people talking about it, you want to encourage sharing, you want to encourage discussion, and this can greatly, greatly contribute to the reach of the campaign and save you media dollars or compensate for that extra spend, that extra time, that extra labor you put into a native execution. And because of that time and labor, and I touched on this before, you want portable content. I like to call it recombinant content. My metaphor is like the Thanksgiving turkey. You want to be able to have the dinner, but then turkey salad, turkey sandwiches, turkey hash. So you want native executions that can be broken down into component parts and then recombined so that you can quickly redeploy them and use them in different channels and in different ways for economy of scale. Once you've invested in the content, don't use it once and toss it out. Use it again and again and again in new ways on new channels and new platforms. You need to train the staff that are doing native executions in what this is, what it matters, how to sell it, how to buy it, how to execute on it. Creative teams, account teams, there's a whole ecosystem out there that doesn't understand it too terribly well, and there's going to be new technologies around it. And finally, Native is going to have to scale, um, not just in terms of recombining the content, but there are players out there like in Hollywood, <coughs> like One Spot, like Taboola, that are developing commercial offerings and technology offerings that can take Native, put it on other platforms, and make it look pretty Native um, on publisher platforms. Um, in terms of content recommendations, but you've got to make sure that when it scales, it's still native, um, still a bit of a sticky wicket. You need to, as with any new channel, figure out what the metrics are, what the KPIs are, and how you're going to measure it. Don't look at publisher metrics, they matter to publishers, they don't tell you how many brand KPIs or advertising KPIs you're fulfilling on. And you want to measure against a converged media model, against the objectives, not just of advertising, but also against content marketing and earned media. And that is really all I've got to say on this subject. I encourage you to download the report. And if you'd like copies of this presentation, it will be on my SlideShare page. Thank you so much for your attention. And uh, it's been great talking to all of you and being in Seattle.